Hey, welcome back, Ivy International Economic Students. To this video lecture today, we are going to go over another exchange rate system, which is the managed exchange rate system. So, first of all, what is the managed exchange rate system? So, we have gone over uh, the fixed exchange rates, the floating exchange rates, and now the third type of exchange rates is the managed exchange rate system. So, what is the managed exchange rate system on the forex market? So, it's when the value of the currency is allowed to float, okay, which is allowed to be guided by the uh, the the demand and supply for the currency however interventions by the government is occurring when um the price level exceeds the quota limit or when the price level for the for for the currency exceeds a certain price range okay so uh, for example um uh u.s dollars to australian dollars could be anywhere between 15 uh uh, could, could be anywhere between 0 0.2 to 0 point, uh, to, to 1 US dollar. However, it can't exceed 1 US dollar or else the government will ex uh, will intervene and devalue the currency. Okay, so that's basically managed exchange rates. So right here, we have the euros per dollar and on, on the y-axis and the Q dollars, the quantity of dollars on the x-axis. Let's say for some reason, okay, let's say for some reason, perhaps uh, European investment in America increases a lot. Okay, so the demand for US dollars gets shifted to right from demand of the dollars to demand dollars one. So so DD to DD one. Okay, so this is the first thing that occurs. DD shifts, um, gets shifted to DD one because of an increase in demand for US dollars, perhaps because of an increase in in foreign investment um of 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 US treasury bonds or something like that by the by the European government or by the European investors now uh, what, what what happens when the demand for US dollars increases? Now, what we see between this gap, okay, well, you, you see this gap, okay, between the price ceiling, okay, and this supply, the supply, uh, the supply equilibrium two, okay, this equilibrium and this equilibrium. What do we see the difference? Okay, the vertical gap distance is the quantity of appreciation of the dollar of the US dollar against the euro. So on the forex market, this is what the, this is what it means. This means that. The more, okay, more euros are needed now to exchange for one dollar. Now that appreciation has occurred, um, because of the dem uh, of the increase in demand for U.S. dollars. Now, this has, um, with with this higher price, it has exceeded the price ceiling that the U.S. uh central bank and U.S. government wants to allow in the forex market. Perhaps U.S. uh governments and U.S. Uh, central banks want to protect. Uh, exporters, U.S. exporters to Europe, and having such a strong currency will actually devalue and make it less competitive on the international market. So perhaps America, the uh, American government and the American central bank will want to lower okay, the currency's value. Now, how could they do that? Okay, there's basically three ways they could do that. The first type is called what we call monetary policies. Okay, monetary and fiscal policies. Now, this could be anything such as interest rates. It could be taxes. It could be government spending. The, the uh, main thing is to increase increase or decrease the money supply. So for example, if a country wants to appreciate their currency, then they will do contractionary fiscal and monetary policies. If they want to depreciate their currency, then they will do uh, up, uh, uh, expansionary uh, fiscal and monetary policies based on their objectives and based on if they want to increase the value or decrease the value for their currencies. Okay, so that's monetary policy is one of the primary tools uh, central banks and government use in order to manage uh, uh, to, ma to manage the currencies and to ensure that the currencies are indeed within a certain price range and it does not exceed the price range. So to make, um, for example, trade or investment uh, less desirable within the country. So another example of what central banks and governments way do is to buy foreign currencies. Now, this is a, a rather extreme example. For example, in Switzerland, they want to devalue the Swiss franc against the euro. So what they did is they started buying, uh, they, 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 they increased the money supply, devaluing the Swiss franc. And in the meantime, they started buying, okay, they started buying euros with their Swiss franc. And they're, that, uh, uh, and, and, and by doing this, they, um, they, they effectively uh, uh, increase the official reserves and also actually uh, decrease the value and, and, and cause depreciation to occur to Swiss francs while causing the European euro to increase in value on the forex market. So that's another method uh, central banks and governments actually use in order to, uh, to influence whether increase or decrease the value of their currency. 
Now, another uh, thing is what we call exchange uh, controls. That's basically setting a physical limit or, or a legal limit on the quantities uh, the currency can be bought and sold at. Usually, this is through and through limits on on foreign investments and such not. Okay, so 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 now that let's let's come back to this graph. So now that uh, the appreciation has occurred because of the demand for the dollars against the euro has increased, how do central banks and how do governments go about doing this? Okay, how do central banks push the exchange rate back down to the price ceiling? So 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 right now we can see that at demand one at the original supply. Uh, we have exceeded the price ceiling. So the central bank wants to increase the money supply either by using uh, official reserves or by using monitoring policies such as interest rates and taxes or, or, or a monitoring policies such as taxes or fiscal policies such as uh, decreasing interest rates. So expansionary, uh, expansionary fiscal policies will lead to an increase in the money supply of dollars against the euros, pushing uh, the, the, the value of the dollar against the euros on the forex market down. Okay, pushing it below the f uh, the price ceiling, leading us to this new equilibrium of supply dollars one and supply dollars uh, and demand dollars one against the European dollar uh, against the European euro. Okay, so this graph basically illustrates a twofold. Once again, how uh, appreciation of a currency may occur on the forex market, as well as how government intervention and central bank intervention through monitoring policies, uh, financial reserves and uh, exchange controls may be able to increase the supply and pushing the exchange uh pushing the 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 value of the US dollars against the euro down to the price ceiling. Now, this is an ex uh, example of a contractionary, uh, of expansionary fiscal policy leading to a depreciation. Now, vice versa, exp uh, expansionary fiscal policies and expansionary fisc monetary policies will lead to a depreciation. Contractionary fiscal policies and contractionary monetary policies will lead to an appreciation of the currency against a hedged uh, against a hedged or widely traded currency such as the US dollar on the international forex market. Okay, so that's basically the uh, the main ideas behind a managed exchange rate, how to illustrate it um yeah. Now, what are some pros and cons of having a managed exchange rate? Now, the first thing, of course, is a lot more stable than a free flow exchange rate. Okay, so foreign investment, foreign trade could uh, engage in other countries more uh, with 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 more uh, ease of doing business because uh, one of the major pros is, of course, it's the stability involved in it. Now, what are some cons? Some cons, of course, is that the government cannot freely use their monetary policies, or the central banks cannot freely use fiscal policies such as expansionary uh, monetary policies such of interest rates and taxes and government spending freely since they also have to uh, consider the forex market and whether the currency has exceeded the price floors and price ceilings. Likewise, another, another major con is that in order to ensure that the currency is within the boundaries and, and then is indeed within the range of said, uh, of said price floors and price ceilings, governments may have to uh, accumulate foreign currency reserves uh, in order to buy and sell and to decrease, to appreciate, to artificially appreciate and depreciate the currency's uh, value against other hedged currencies, such as China. They have huge U.S. dollar reserves in order to 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 have uh, contractionary fiscal policies in order to combat uh, the the case where the Chinese yen increasing. Uh, increases in value against uh, the U.S. dollar uh, uh, exceeding the price ceiling, leading uh, to undesirable trade uh, deficits and trade imbalance and, and, and becoming less competitive on the world stage. So, um, therefore, the government also has to keep an eye on the forex market in order to ensure that... Um, once again, the, 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 the price floors and pricings are indeed respected. And this will take away a uh, leeway away from the freedom that governments and central banks have to freely use uh, expansionary and contractionary monetary policies to their advantage. So, um, yeah, that's managed exchange rates in, in a nutshell, explored, illustrated, and, 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 and evaluated with the pros and cons talked about. So, yeah, there we go.